All right, welcome everybody to the 2020 virtual softball captains meeting. My name is Owen Ryan, and I'm the director of sports and communications here at Hub Sports Boston. I'll be here today to lead you through this virtual meeting. Obviously not joining me today, but I did want to give them a big shout out are the rest of our staff, which would be the owners, Chris Parenti and Michael Nason. In addition, we have Aiden Veer as our sales manager and Kevin Pressey as the operations manager. So we're going to dive on in here and let you guys know some of the most important things throughout the season that you're going to need to know, answer some frequently asked questions, and really just give you a nice quick rundown on what to expect from Hub Softball. Our organization, Hub Sports, was founded about 10 years ago by Mike and Chris, and uh, they, they started off with about a 12-team softball league in Watertown. Over the course of about the last 10 years, we have turned into the largest softball organization in the Northeast. Uh, and so that basically means that we have about five to 600 unique softball teams that play with us throughout the year, believe it or not. In addition to softball, we also offer soccer, basketball, and flag football. Those sports are quickly growing as well. And they're up, we're up to about three or 400 teams in those sports as well, which amounts to roughly 1,000 unique teams that play with us and over 12,000 participants throughout the greater Boston area that play with us. We're also at about 50 different unique softball or soccer or football fields in, in addition to indoor facilities. And we encompass about a 25 plus mile radius throughout the city of greater Boston. So, if there's a sport or an area that you're in that you're looking to play, most likely we've got you covered. Now, you as a softball captain will either have received your supplies or you will be receiving your supplies this week for your upcoming season. If you have not done that yet, please reach out to us, send us an email or give us a phone call to arrange a specific pickup time. Uh, a little bit different than years past. We don't have the office to just pop into. We are still at our offices in Newton, but we are requesting that you schedule a specific time to come pick up your supplies. So your supplies are gonna include a set of your preset t-shirts that are of, of assorted sizes from averages of years past. And if you do need some different sizes, we'll try and make that happen for you. Uh, obviously the shirts can't be worn or used in any way, but if you do need to swap out a couple sizes, we're, we'll do our best to get that done for you if we do have them in our inventory. Uh, in addition to your uh, t-shirts, you're also gonna be receiving one brand new softball per game. So if you have a six game season, you're gonna have six softballs in there. And you're also going to have one bottle of hand sanitizer per game to share amongst your teammates. So again, six game season, six bottles of hand sanitizer in there for you. Um, you also have a scorebook and your new return to play guidelines. So make sure to share those with your teammates. Make sure everyone is aware of what's going on and the changes this year. I will dive into those a little deeper uh, a little bit later. But as I think we all know, the world's a little different now. And of the utmost priority for us is your safety and health. The thing that I like to say is this is the everybody's got to go to work tomorrow league. So we never wanted any injuries prior. And now we always want to keep your uh, the safety and healthy of the utmost priority. So throughout this presentation, I'll be covering some of the most important questions, covering some scenarios that'll come up throughout the season. So without any further ado, Let's dive on into this. So first off, you have the website and you have your website account, which is called your hub zone. The most important thing that you're going to do this year is invite every person that's playing on your team to join your roster. It's not a recommendation. This is a 100% requirement. If they're not on your roster, they are not playing. Um, there is a new waiver form that must be filled out for every participant joining the field of play this year. And it is very important, crucial, that every person that is playing on your team is attached to your roster. Very easy to do. We'll send out a quick tutorial on how to do that as well to all the team captains, but no exceptions. You're not on the roster. You are not playing. The biggest reason why you're going to want people on the roster as a captain is it boy, it saves you a lot of time and energy. 
everyone on your roster is also going to be receiving game day reminders. So they're going to be receiving the same type of notification that you are as a team captain. So they give you a 48 hour reminder before your game. So there's no more, Oh, I didn't know we had a game. Now, obviously you as a team captain, you still want to do your due diligence of checking in, making sure you have enough people per game uh, per week that you have a game. But this is also going to act as an additional reminder for you guys to be able to kind of rally the troops and get them prepared and ready for the game. So very important. Have every single person that's playing on your team on your roster. Um, this is a hundred percent required this year. Incomplete roster means that you guys cannot take the field. If it's obviously there's 10 people allowed on the softball field at a time. If you have five people on there, you're going to be receiving a notice prior to the game that your roster is incomplete. And therefore you will be forfeiting the game if you do not complete your roster. So other features include being able to check your schedule through your hub zone. Uh, you can also enter your game scores. We do ask that you do that within 24 hours of completing the game, whether you win, lose, home, or away. Please enter your game scores. Uh, it's kind of funny. We, I like this line to say this as well. We actually run more games per week than Major League Baseball does and per year, and especially this year with their 60-game season. Um, so there's a lot to keep track of, and you guys entering in your game scores is a huge help for the whole league, whole organization. Uh, it also just makes it more fun. You're able to check the standings on there. You're able to see, you know, where you stand from week to week, see, you know, how you fare against your opponent. If you're going to play a tough team, uh, maybe a not so tough team in the weeks coming up. So it just kind of keeps everyone more engaged and it keeps things more fun. So make sure everyone has an account. Make sure they are, have joined your roster. This is very crucial. And additionally, this saves you a lot of time and effort as a captain because if a game is ever canceled, which I will dive into uh, very shortly, they are going to receive that message as well. So whether it be a forfeit or a rain out, your teammates are going to receive the same notification that you are. So that takes the onus off of you as the captain being like, oh, I got to hop on Facebook. I got to get the group text going. I got to make some phone calls. Nope. As soon as you receive that message, all of your teammates have received the same message too. So very crucial on the website, log into your account, hit my registered activities, hit add slash invite players, copy and paste in their email addresses, send them away. And then it'll also tell you who has not filled out or who has not signed up yet. So you'll see a pending invite section. So the stragglers get on them, make sure they do it again. Not a recommendation, 100% required this year. So our website is also home for all your game rules, frequently asked questions, policies, future upcoming events and tournaments. Really everything that we do is right there on our website, hubsportsboston.com. This is a big one here. So you get your schedule, you know where you're playing, you know what time your game is, you know what position you are, you're feeling good, you got your glove, you got your cleats, you're ready to go, you're ready to play but then your game gets rained out. So this is something that'll come up in the season that, you know, is aside from the normal day to day. Okay. Like I just said, you see your schedule, but then, Oh wait, the game is rained out. This does happen. Rainouts do happen. So we personally have a grounds crew that goes around from field to field, city to city. They'll uh, get eyes on the field and they will actually fix the field. Believe it or not, they bring out the dry dirt, they get the blower, the rakes, all of that and get that field playable. We make the deadline of 5 p.m. for weeknight games. So if you have a weeknight game and you have not received an email notification from us, your game is on. Early in the season, we tend to get a lot of phone calls, emails, people asking us, you know, is my game on? Is it off? I see rain in the forecast. Forecast says it's going to rain. Radar looks like it's going to rain. Every storm, every scenario is always a little bit different. Now, we never cancel on a forecast. Never, ever, ever. But I can't tell you how many times it said 70, 80, 90% chance of rain. Well, guess what? Maybe it poured in Dedham, and Dedham got all soaked, you know, south of the 95 corridor. But Boston and Charlestown are sunny as can be, not a cloud in the sky. It, it happens. So we don't cancel on a forecast. We cancel on those field conditions. Now, for Sunday games, we believe it or not, we got people out there 5 a.m. 5 a.m., clean the field. As soon as the sun's up, birds chirping, we got guys with rakes getting those fields ready to play for you guys. So we'll never leave you in the dark. We'll never leave you hanging. If your game is canceled due to poor field conditions, we will notify you via email 
or if it's after hours, we're going to call you or send you a text message. So you don't hear from us by the deadline, your game is 100% on. And again, your full roster is going to be notified of this. So at 2 o'clock, we make the determination that your field is unplayable, we cannot get it playable. We will be sending out an email to you to let you know your game is rained out and it will be rescheduled. And everyone's going to receive that same kind of message. So you as the team captain do not need to let 10 to 15 additional people know that the game has been canceled. They will be aware of that. Safety is always our number, pri number one priority. We will not be sending you out there if the field has a puddle on it, if you're going to slip and fall, hurt yourself. No, not going to happen. Safety is always the number one priority for us. So if your game is canceled, everyone on the roster is going to know about it, and we will reschedule it. In addition to us reaching out to you, we have a way that you can reach out to us. You can call our rainout hotline. So maybe you're in an area where you can't get uh, cell service or cell data by some crazy chance that happens and you have a landline accessible, you just call up our, land, uh, our uh, rainout hotline, 617-863-8300, extension 4. And that'll let you know, you know, oftentimes you'll hear a message such as, all softball games have been canceled today except for Charlestown High School. Now, why Charlestown High School? Well, that's a turf field. Turf fields almost never get canceled because they drain exceptionally well, and there's never any issue with uh, poor field conditions on a turf field. No, there's no dirt on it, obviously. So if you're playing a league on a turf field, be prepared to play, unless there are just absolute downpours coming down, thunder, lightning, snow, then we're not going to play the game. So. Keep your eye on your email. You always want to have your personal email on there as well. Don't put a work email in there. Sometimes we have issues with firewalls, spam, all that kind of stuff. Put your personal email on there. Keep refreshing it. Keep checking it on the, get, the day of a game. If there is rain in the forecast, we'll never leave you hanging, never leave you in the dark. Really never a reason to ever reach out to us. We're on top of it, and we will notify you guys. We will let you know. So if you don't hear from us, game is on. All right, here's another one, that, big one that's going to pop up throughout the season. Forfeits. Again, you see, you see your schedule. You're like, all right, we're good. We know where we're playing. All right, we're, we are set. And then a game gets forfeited. We realize, you know, softball isn't life. Teams need to forfeit. Things come up. Life happens. We realize that. So if you do need to forfeit your game, you must forfeit by 2 p.m. on a weeknight. So if your game is 7 o'clock that night, you need to email us or call us to let us know that you have to forfeit by 2 p.m. You must receive confirmation as well. Uh, if you have a Sunday game, we ask that you let us know by 5 p.m. on Friday uh, that you're going to need to forfeit. This way, that gives us plenty of time to be able to reach out to your umpire, your opponent, to let them know, don't show up to the field, game has been forfeited. Before I go any further, though, I will let you know of the biggest and best tool that we have in the existence of this organization. And that tool is called HubSubs. Now, let me tell you, it hasn't saved hundreds in the course of my years here. It's probably saved a couple thousand games at this point. HubSubs is the biggest and best tool that you can use to not have to forfeit a game. It's a Facebook group with about 1,200 members in there all just ready to play softball at the drop of a dime. I kid you not. It's, it's crazy to see how many people will play softball at just any time, any moment. They love it. Absolute diehards on there. So if you haven't yet, go to Facebook, type in Hub Subs on the search bar, and request access. We will grant you access. And then all you're going to do is post something along the lines of, uh, hey, everyone, we need one female and one male for our 7 o'clock game at St. Peter's Field in Cambridge. We wear blue. Uh, pitcher preferred. You know, something like that. And then you just see all the responses roll in. It, it's crazy. It's, it's really uh, it's enlightening to see the, the softball community step up like that and help each other out. And um, so if you almost really have to want to forfeit because the tool there that is it's in place it's there to help you guys and i kid you not hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of games have been saved 
by hub subs. So utilize that tool first before you have to forfeit. If you do have to forfeit, you know, the work event comes up, networking thing you got to go to, we understand. You got to do what you got to do. Softball is not life for everyone. So please let us know by the deadlines. Um, if you do not let us know by the deadlines, there will be some small penalties that are incurred. And that's basically just to keep, uh, you know, everyone on an even keel here. So if you have to forfeit after the deadline, don't leave us hanging. Still let us know. You know, there's been instances of someone gets in like a, a minor fender bender on 93 and they're on the way to the game. They got five people in the car. They're like, you know, I took this call a few years ago. And they said, you know, I'm really sorry. We're, we're not going to be able to make it. Hey, it's no harm, no foul. You know, at least you were able to let us know so we could give your opponent a call and give the umpire a call to let them know. So they're not looking around, looking in the parking lot. Where are these guys? Then they're calling us. Then we're calling you. Then we're texting you. So if it is after the deadline, please still call us. Let us know that you do have to forfeit. You know, just do the right thing. Keeps everyone happy. Um, the ultimate worst thing that you can do as a captain or a, a team in, in the league is just to pull a no-show. Is to go, oh, man, I'm having a great day at the beach. I know we had a game at 1 o'clock, but eh, whatever. They'll figure it out. No, that's, that's the worst thing that you can do because, again, the whole scenario comes up. We start calling you. We start texting, emailing, going down your roster, finding, like, where are these guys? Where is the team? So if you do that, you're also going to incur a $50 penalty. If you forfeit after the deadline but you do let us know, you'll just be responsible for your team's umpire fees and your opponent's umpire fees. So that's just a $40 fee. You pull the old no-show whammy, $90 fee. And you pull the no-show, you're also automatically ineligible for the playoffs. So the no-show is the absolute worst thing that you can do. One forfeit throughout the season, totally fine, no harm, no foul. Two forfeits that would unfortunately make you ineligible for the playoffs when we're talking about a six-game season here. That's a third of the season that you've forfeited. If you forfeit three games throughout the season, you will be removed from the league. Again, not anyone's fault, but more often than not, when people play money to pay, pay money to play softball, they are there to play softball. So just in the best interest of the league to keep everyone uh, on that same even keel like that. And again, I can't stress it enough. You have to use hub subs. If you're thinking that you might need to forfeit a game, you really need to use hub subs. So before you do anything else, after this little uh, virtual meeting here, go to Facebook, hit hub subs, uh, or type in hub subs and request access. All right, some frequently asked questions here. Can I change my schedule? Oh, man. A bunch of my buddies are going to the Red Sox game and uh, we're doing this and that. No, I know that probably won't be happening this year, but I just used a random example. So once the schedule is out, we do not change it for any reason at all other than a rain out. If your game is rained out, obviously that game is rescheduled. That's added to your schedule at the end of the season. If you're just requesting to change the schedule, unfortunately, we can't make that happen. As much as we would all love to be able to say, sure, no problem, we got you. We'll make that change 100%. We would love to do that. We'd love to keep everyone happy, you know? Happy customers, happy life, right? But unfortunately, when we convenience your team, we do inconvenience the other team. That team has made their plans. They got their babysitters. They told the girlfriend, the boyfriend, Honey, I'm playing softball today. You make your own plans. So they have their own lives going on. We realize you have your life. So if we could do it, we would. But unfortunately, we cannot take any requests to change the schedule at all. So once it's out, it's final. If you have some requests right now, shoot them over to Kevin. Kevin at HubSportsBoston.com. Kevin is the schedule master. Uh, he will make that. He will try and get it done for you. If you have some requests right now to say, hey, we're, we're away at a wedding uh, September 4th, something like that. Send that over now. We'll get it plugged in to the, to the schedule generator, and we'll see if we can make that happen for you. Who do I call? Well, really, generally, there's only one number that you can call for us, 617-863-8300. I'll have that number listed at the end of the slides as well. Um, that's our number for everything. That's the one general number, and you're going to hear a bunch of different extensions on there to be able to get to the appropriate person that you're going to need for your specific question. Here's a fun one. Can we drink at the field? Now, I know we're, we're all adults here, right? You know, we're, 
we're all adults. We all like to have some fun, you know, especially with what's been going on in the world lately. Everyone wants to get out there, play softball, have a couple drinks, have some fun. Unfortunately, we are a strict no alcohol policy. So that means don't be that guy lugging the 30 rack of Bud Lights to the field because you will get busted. Not by us, but believe it or not, there are actual park rangers that patrol the fields as well as police that patrol the fields. And they've been known to hand out some uh, open container tickets or public intoxication, you know, what, what, whatever it is, you don't want it. So we don't care what you do beforehand. We don't care what you do after the game. That's of no concern to us. Again, we're all adults. We want to have fun. But we do care that you are not bringing a drip of alcohol to the field. We don't even want a little tab on the top of the can left in the dugout. I'm going to get into the, the, the COVID-19 procedures, but it's carry in, carry out. So don't even leave a water bottle cap at the field. No alcohol, no way, no how. Especially this year, it's going to be strictly enforced that there is no booze at the field. Again, have some fun beforehand. Have some fun afterwards by all means. All right, who makes the playoffs? So generally 50 to 60% of the league will make the playoffs. There are a lot of different uh, factors that go into this though. For instance, how many teams are in the league, how much field space we have permitted, how much more time we have on the field, so on and so forth. But generally, if you're above 500, you know, you end up five and five, six and four, or something like that, you can rest assured that you're going to be making the playoffs. This is usually a, a question that becomes way more clear to us uh, about halfway through the season, given those factors on uh, how much field space we have allotted left. So you can find the rules, the specific softball rules. While they can be lengthy, I'm not going to go through each and every one of them uh, with you guys here today. They can be found on our website on the sport specific page. If you go to the softball page, scroll down, You'll click the rules right there. You'll see all the rules. We also have ground rules. Every field is a little bit different. You know, some balls are out of play in some areas. Some balls are foul, hit here, hit there. Some balls are home run, ground or triple, so on and so forth. Just check out the ground rules. Uh, the, the umpire will also go over the ground rules with you and the other team captain prior to the start of the game as well. So um, just check those out if you're curious. Um, otherwise, we have not changed any rules this year except for – uh, one main rule, and that is you can now add a designated hitter uh, into the lineup. We realize there are some people that are a little um, skeptical or, or, or hesitant, have you, to, to maybe get, uh, to get right up there and bat, um, you know, to be somewhat closer to an umpire or, or the catcher. Uh, while we are socially dist distancing everyone behind the plate, we will allow for a DH this year. So I did want to just add that quick little tidbit in that. Um, so the uh, gender specific DH has to be replaced with that gender specific. So if you're, if a female batter um, does not want to bat, she just wants to play the field. She must be replaced with another female uh, at bat. So you can't put a male in there at that female spot. And um all the equipment that we're going to be using this year, there are some, you know, different, uh, there are some changes this year as in from years past. I'm about to jump into the COVID-19 return to play policies, but all of our required and recommended equipment is also listed on our website as well. Without further ado, the COVID-19 policies. So, Obviously, safety is, re is really our number one concern here. It always has been. It always will be. Just like unsafe field conditions, we're never going to put you in harm's way. Um, so, you know, there's a lot to cover here. So let's just jump right in. We also gave the captains a hard copy PDF of these changes as well. So to start off, there's going to be a maximum of 25 people at the field. Unfortunately, you can't bring the wife, the husband, the boyfriend, girlfriend, Anyone. No, no spectators are allowed at the field, unfortunately. And that's going to also include pets. We have carry in, carry out. Every single morsel of uh, liquid, of pen, like 
everything comes with you. We don't even want a little Band-Aid or a piece of tape left at the field. So most fields are going to have trash receptacles. Every town and city is a little bit differently with how they provide those or retrieve those. So we do ask that you might just bring along a, you know, a grocery bag with you for a small plastic bag, you know, just to carry in the, or carry out your trash. Same thing as a beach, you know, you wouldn't just leave your trash all around at the beach. So we just ask that you're respectful in that way and that'll keep us in, in good standing, keep you guys in good standing. Um, so you're always going to socially distance, you know, 100% when possible. So we realize it's not always possible. But when you're in the dugout, you know, the days of the, the burly chest bumps and the high fives and fist bumps and the bear hugs and all of that, those days are done. We, we really ask that you guys are going to socially distance yourself in the dugout and while you're near home plate. So the requirements of wearing a mask are that when you must wear a mask when you're in the dugout, when you're at bat, and when you're batting. When you're in the field on defense, uh, you do not need to wear a mask. And when you're running the base path, you do not need to wear a mask. These are our specific uh, league requirements and um so if you it, it's recommended that you continually wear a mask but it is not required when you're in the field of play as you are obviously able to socially distance yourself by well over six feet per position when you're out there in the field of play so um our other uh, mask policies are also listed on that PDF as well. So if you want to just read through that in detail, please do. For instance, the umpires will all be masked. Um, and you can read up on all those specifics. Um, no touch rule, like I said. You know, no high fives after the game. None of that stuff, unfortunately. You know, this is just the time that we're in. We all want to be safe, healthy. And so we can keep playing softball for seasons and, and years to come here. So we were actually really lucky to have a variety of resources uh, at our disposal to come up with these different guidelines. You know, we worked with different organizations such as the state of Massachusetts, the Small Business Association, and our biggest industry partner, which is the SSIA, the Sport and Social Industry Association, which is created of amongst organizations that do the same exact thing that we do all throughout the country. So we're speaking to people in California, Florida, Houston, Seattle, every different corner of the country you could think of where things are different than they are here. And cumulatively, we have all come up with these guidelines, which we are, are proud to present to you guys. So we hope that you can continue to follow through with them and, and keep the softball train rolling here. So a quick wrap up, um, we obviously always encourage you guys to, to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Those are our two biggest social platforms. We do a lot of things with giveaways. Uh, we gave away so many different Red Sox tickets last year. We gave away two different sets of Patriots tickets. So we're always doing giveaways. So you got to tune in for that. And then um, on both Instagram and Facebook. So you'll also notice if you go to our Facebook page that every single championship game for every single sport has a professional photographer provided for the game. So along with your championship swag, you know, your trophy, your shirts, your different prizes and goodies, we'll be providing you a Facebook album with over 100 photos of the game. So if you just go to our Facebook page right now, you click on the photo albums, you can see there are probably about 80, 90, maybe even over 100 albums at this point. We've been doing this for about the last year and a half. It's been quite popular. So, you know, you can find your friends, see all your teammates, tag yourselves on there, comment, you know, really hoop it up. Um, and uh, very, very soon we'll be having our sponsors and different perks come back. Obviously, everything kind of just took a halt back in March, but uh, we've been getting in contact again and trying to pick back up some with some of the sponsorship deals we had going on for you guys and, and the different perks that we offered you throughout the season. So we're really excited about that, and um, you know, we hope that you guys do still uh, stay engaged in that way. Um, so we hope that, you know, that this has added some clarity for you guys throughout the season, you know, what to expect, what, what the upcoming season is going to look like. We know you, some people may be a little bit nervous, but, uh, we're fully confident. We're happy to, to have you guys on board here. We're confident in our procedures that are in place and, and really hopeful that, uh, that, you know, you can have fun this season and that you're able to 
enjoy the experience of softball out there. So as always, our number is listed right here on this slide. You can give us a call at 617-863-8300 uh, and dial any extension that you should need. Or our generic email address is also staff at hubsportsboston.com. And as always, don't hesitate to reach out if anything happens during the game day. No, fee, uh, no lights at the field, no umpire, something like that. Pick up the phone, give us a call. We have after hours uh, staff in place to take care of these issues. So whenever there is something that arises you need help with, we're there to help you guys. So again, thank you for tuning in to this presentation. We hope that you guys really have a lot of fun this season out there on the field. And good luck playing softball with Hub Sports Boston this year.